how excited are you all to believe about another campaign? Yeah, look, the the last campaign was obviously ended on um, the biggest high we could get, but now we're into another one and it's about, you know, it's a different tournament um, and it's exciting, of course it is. Um, you know, we we finally, you know, qualified and kind of got rid of, you know, the you know people thinking that we could never do it and things like that. You know, it's been a long time, but now it's about building on that and it's about trying to go into the next one full of confidence and... Um, you know, try and, you know, tick that box as well. It'd be incredible to, to play in a World Cup and, um, you know, we'll be trying everything to, to try and be competitive in this group to, to make sure that happens. Is it about being fully focused on this campaign on its own rather than letting your mind kind of wander onto the Euros in a couple of months' time as well? Look, that was, that was an easy one. The first day we had a meeting, we spoke about certain things that we had to speak about, about the Euros, about certain dates and things like that, so the lads knew, and then it was put to bed, and it was forgotten about, because, you know, we can't have one eye on, you know, three, four months' time, we've got to have our full focus on this World Cup qualifying campaign, because in a normal life, these would maybe be, you know, a couple of friendlies building up to it, but um, because we missed a lot of international football, it's, it's competitive games, and you know, you can't get campaigns off to a bad start. Um, you know, we've done that a couple of times in previous and it's, you then build momentum near the end and it's just too little, too late. So it's important we try to get off to a good start. Um, we've got, we've got tough games, but um, we believe we can be competitive in them and if we bring the confidence that we have, then um, I believe we can cause, you know, any team in this group problems. Andy, how, just how important is momentum in football and can you... It's almost difficult to explain sometimes when you're on a roll that it just keeps 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 happening and, and obviously conversely, you know, it's a bit difficult to get you it. Do you really want to, to push forward that feel good factor and make sure that you, you do stay on a roll? Yeah, exactly that. Um you know, like you said, with us, you know, qualifying and ticking that box in November, um, we then had the momentum and it's it's important that, you know, it maybe came at the worst you know, international months for that because you wait then another kind of four or five months to play an international game. But you could see the boys walking in on Sunday and Monday with a big smile on their face and ready to go and ready to pull on a Scotland shirt again. And, you know, that's what we've tried to create. Um, and, you know, the feel-good factor is still there and it's still in training and it's still in the hotel, but um, it's about taking that onto the pitch. And that's always been the difficult thing, but it's about something that we've we've done over the last couple of international breaks. So... It's about just trying to carry that on. Um, we know Austria tomorrow is going to be um, a really tough game. We know the qualities that they've got, but we know the qualities we've got as well. And we believe that if we're at our best, then we can cause them problems. But we need to show that. When you haven't seen the, when you haven't seen the guys for four or five months, do, as a captain, do you, do you take it upon yourself maybe to, to, to sit down and make sure you're all chatting together about your goals and about your targets, about your mindset as well? Make sure you're on the same thing. Yeah, we have, but I think the mindset and the goals of all the players are pretty clear. I think you can see that just walking into a room with them all, you can see that they're all driven individuals, which helps a driven team. And uh, and that's what, credit to the manager and the coaches, as soon as they've come in, that's what they've tried to you know get across to us. And we've all bought into it. So when new lads come in, um, you know they kind of see the, the nucleus of the squad, 17, 18 of us, how we... Um, you know, approach training, approach games, and approach represent our country, and and they buy into it. So, you know, we we have done that. Of course, we have, but you know, we don't have to because you can see it in the lads. And and like you said, over that kind of four or five months of not seeing each other, it was important we kept contact, and we all did. Um, and that's why you know when you come in here, you catch up with them, of course. But um, we're ready to go, and we're ready to work again. And um, hopefully, this week can be successful. I know your foes on Sunday, Andy. Israel, but Austria, a novelty. I don't think you'll have come up against. Yeah, I don't think we've played Austria. I can't remember the last time Scotland had played them. I can't remember certainly, but um, you know we know their qualities. We've watched them. You know we've we've been in meetings all week and and seen videos of them, and they're a very good team. You know, full of quality. Um, and obviously there was talk about will their full team come, will they not? But they've all travelled, so we're playing against their strongest team and. We'll need to be at our best to beat them. But if we are, then we definitely can cause them problems, we believe. And, um, you know, hopefully then we can take our chances. But it's also about trying to keep them out the other end and, and trying to build on, you know, last year where we kept quite a lot of clean sheets because that's key to winning games. Um, and that's what that's what we need to do in this campaign to to get anywhere where we want to be. What would you say Austria's strengths were? 
Yeah. They've got good width by the fullbacks. The fullbacks bomb on. You know, obviously David Alaba speaks for himself. Um, you know, a fantastic player, um, fantastic career. Um, their midfielders are hard working. They've got, you know, big guy up top that can hold the ball in and things like that. So look. They're a very good team. They're very confident. Um, they can build up from the back and, you know, comfortable on the ball. Um, so, you know, we need to be at our best where, our, you know, our shape needs to be good. And um, and then we need, to, we need to press at the right moments. And and if we do that and we win it back, then I believe we can, um, we can hurt them. But it's about us trying to play our game plan to the best possible way. And uh, if we do that, then I believe we can get a result. Um, we've been really good under this manager by doing that, you know, following his instructions, following what he wants and, and seeing out the game plan. And um, I believe if we do that tomorrow night, we we can get a result. The manager was saying that, you know, a happy dressing room is a successful one. How much does that apply to Scotland? And how much is it now beginning to feel like a club mentality? You know, you've mentioned that all the boys are keeping in touch and sort of familiar faces and stuff. How important is that? Well, that's what we try to create. Um, you know, I think the gaffer maybe spoke to a couple of us when he first came in and maybe said what was maybe missing and or whatever. And I think a lot of us said, you know, that club mentality. You know, there was a lot of, you know, at one time there was a lot of kind of chopping and changing in the squad. There was maybe seven or eight, maybe nine sometimes new faces every time. And it's it's hard to then build relationships off the park and, and build that... Um, you know, build their friendships. And now, like you said, we've got that kind of nucleus where there's, you know, kind of maybe 17, 18 that are, are, are familiar with everyone. And then the, the new lads come in and we make it easy for them to fit in. So, you know, it is, it is a club-like mentality here now. Um, all the boys got on off the park. Um, we all are, are close. And that makes a huge difference because it makes you run that extra yard for each other on the pitch. It makes you do that extra run. It makes you you know, fight for each other that wee bit more. And I think you've seen that over the last, you know, couple of international breaks and it's about now carrying that on and, and keep fighting for each other. And I'm, I'm sure we will do that. Do you think that bond has been strengthened because of what you went through with the qualifying together? We've obviously have seen the scenes of celebration and whatnot. I mean, that must create a bond that's very hard to break, not only on the field, but off it. Yeah, um, 100%. Um, you know, having something to celebrate like that, you know, it's probably been few and far between for um, a Scotland team um, and being able to qualify for a major tournament it was it was massive for us so um, you know we, we celebrated in the right way and like you said it was it was a great night and it brought us probably even closer together so you know on the night that we finally qualified for a tournament uh, it done more for us than anything because after the game and at night then the squad got even closer I believe and you can see that now, you know, the relationships off the park are even stronger now than they probably were in November and October and things like that. And they'll only build on it. You know, we're a relatively young squad. Hopefully a lot of us have still got a lot of international football left in us. And um, the longer it goes, the, the stronger it gets. And um, hopefully that's the case. And on that, in terms of yourself personally, I mean, I don't want to compare anything to a Champions League one, but as a captain leading your side out at a World Cup, where does that sort of rank for you in terms of not only your ambitions, but where would it sit? In the career. Yeah, look, it'd be it'd be right up there. Um, I've always been somebody that's not looked too far ahead, so I won't think about that until um, we're maybe that bit closer. But um, look, it'd be incredible. The Euros will be special as it is, and but the World Cups, the next level up. You know, you're playing against the whole world. You're playing against, you know, the big countries in South America and Africa and things like that. So. You know, the World Cup is, is special and we would love to represent our country there. Of course, all of us would, but um, we've got a lot of games on our hands to get us anywhere close to that and we need to be at our best throughout the whole campaign, not in spells. Um, and if we do that, then I believe we've got a chance, but the the group's full of quality and um, there's only one automatic place up for grabs and um, I'm sure everyone will be trying to go for it. Andy, how do you feel your own personal form is right now? Yeah, look, I think we have, um, as Liverpool, we've, we've bounced back. Um, you know, the last couple of results have been have been more like us. Um, you know, there's a bit more responsibility put on, you know, me and the things like that this, this season with um, being one of the only ones that's kind of managed to stay fit. You know, probably more luck than anything. Um, but look, I've enjoyed the responsibility. I've enjoyed that added, you know, pressure of it. Um, so... But of course, when the club 
when we don't get results like we did over Christmas period and into January, February, then it's not good enough. It doesn't matter what individuals are doing or anything. We're a team and it, it wasn't good enough and all of us weren't good enough. So that was disappointing, but I believe personally and collectively we're getting we're getting back to where we should be but it's about building momentum which at club level we've we've struggled with this season. Do you feel like going through tough moments like that makes you a better player, better leader as well, especially as captain of Scotland? Potentially, I'll let you know. <laughs> um you know we probably don't know that until, you know, of course with the injuries we got at Liverpool, a lot of them were our leaders. You know, when we lost, you know, Henderson, Van Dijk, Fabinho uh, Milner for a period of time you know you've lost a lot of you know leaders there um, and that's you know it's some the, the injuries are bad enough but then the personnel you're losing is sometimes makes it even worse so of course me and you know Wijnaldum and people like that probably had to step up that bit more and but look that 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 adds to it it's, it's part of your job and um, I've always tried to lead on and off the pitch whether I've got the armband whether I've not got the armband it doesn't make a difference to me and um, hopefully I've done that and um, but hopefully we have the boys back soon. Just finally going back to the game tomorrow night, obviously it's the, the opening match, so you don't want to call it a must win, but when you're playing the second seed and they're likely the ones you'll be rivaling in for second or first place, do you feel like when it's at home, it's a game you really need to win to, to seize the initiative and, and be out in front so you're not chasing the tail end of the group? Look, you know, you only know that once you're at the end of the campaign. Of course you do, you only know how important, you know, three points where you pick up or sometimes one points and things like that how important they are at an end of a campaign but every team wants to get the campaign off to a good start that's you know everyone wants to do that everyone will be trying to do that tonight tomorrow night um friday so that's that's what you want you want the first three points on the board of course you do but austria will want that as well and they'll be coming over here um unfortunately there's no fans in the stadium so you know home games sometimes don't feel like home games just now and um but look we'll be trying to get off to a good start we need to be at our best to to try and beat them um and hopefully we are because if we are then i do believe we can cause them problems but they'll believe they can cause us problems as well and it's about trying to stop that and hopefully a good defensive display off us and and hopefully we can um, take our chances when they fault us as well given it's an empty stadium Andy, is, there, is there such a thing as <coughs> Home advantage in football in these COVID times? Look, there still is. You know, you're familiar with the surroundings, you're familiar with everything else, but, you know, your home advantage starts with the fans. You know, it starts and really ends with your fans. Um, if there's a full Hamden stadium, it makes a, a huge difference in, um, you know, qualifying games. But, unfortunately, in times we are just now, then, unfortunately, we can't have any of them in. So, look, we are missing them. I'm sure they are, you know, missing Hamden as well. And, you know, I just hope in the summer we can we can get them in for the two games we've got there, but that's for another conversation. Um, but tomorrow we know it's going to be an empty stadium, and all players in world football now is unfortunately used to that now. And um, but it's just about trying to trying to win the game, and um, hopefully we can do that.